Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. For today's video, I wanna deep dive, really deep dive, a comment that was made by Elon Musk yesterday at a Morgan Stanley conference, an investor conference, that I think is still not very well understood and it deserves a little bit more breath, a little bit more time for it to simmer because the implications from this thing are truly just, <laughs> it's weird. It's really, really weird. So let's go ahead and get started right away. I wanna give a big thanks to Severin from my community for recommending this topic. Thank you so much. Uh, in case you're not caught up, let me play this two minute snip from the conversation yesterday that we're going to deep dive. I'll have chapters as well below. If you already saw this part, you, you're free to jump forward. But for those that haven't seen it, I'm going to go ahead and play it and we'll listen to it together and we'll deep dive. Your next phase of vertical integration, the relentless first principles thinking on vehicle design, battery design, factory optimization, you know, at the same time uh, as the vehicle that could lead to a target, I guess, of this, you know, 50% uh, step change in cost when the new gen um, uh, eventually comes around. Um, can you just take us through the, the quick summary of that? And, and it unlocks the next uh, wave of the TAM because there's price elasticity is, is the, what you were sharing on this subject as the second big takeaway for Tesla? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a clear path to uh, making a vehicle, a smaller vehicle, that is roughly half the production cost and difficulty of our of Model 3. Um, that vehicle will be, uh, or, you know, really used almost entirely in autonomous mode. The, the, the thing that is really gigantic uh, for, for, for Tesla is autonomy. Um, and if people have used the Tesla full self-driving and have seen how rapidly the full self-driving capability has been evolving, um, it, it, it should be obvious that that is by far the most profound thing. Um, the, 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 the sort of total addressable market stuff, it's like, guys, you, this is like actually not the right way to think about it. It's, it's like um, Passenger vehicles right now only see about 10, 10 to 12 hours of use per week. Um, there's 168 hours in a week. If those vehicles are, are autonomous, they're probably going to get used for 50 or 60 hours a week. That's a 5x in, in, increase in the value of a car, but, and it costs the same to make the car. At, at that point, you basically have software margins and a hardware product. The two primary terms that were dropped that I really want to focus on very, very, very uh, sort of deep dive are price elasticity and the autonomous capabilities of this Gen 3 car and how those two things play with each other. We'll start with price elasticity. And in case you're not familiar, I used to be a director of pricing and business intelligence before my time at Tesla at this company called Philips Peffin and Supplies, billion dollar distributor of pet food. Thank you everybody at Philips for teaching me everything I know. And so when I hear price elasticity, I'm like, oh my God, yes, I get to talk about it. <laughs> uh, if you're enjoying this video, we'll love it if, if you throw me a like, it helps the YouTube algorithm show there's some more people. Thank you so much. So what does pricing do to people wanting something? And this is really the core principle of price elasticity. You have things that are uh, inelastic, which basically means that how you move the price doesn't really impact how much people want it. But then you have things where, depending on what the price is, people will want it more or can afford it. But it's also very important that people want it. That's really, really important is that people need to want something. If you offer somebody a rock for $10, and but then you offer it for one dollar, you're still not going to have somebody that's going to want to buy it, right? So people are going to want to want something, and it also has to be elastic. So let's walk through those two things. With zero advertising, as we're thinking about people wanting a Tesla in this case, Tesla was able to beat Ford in brand, brand loyalty for the first time, according to the S&P Global Mobility. This was big news that was unveiled this past weekend. Ford has been, had this award for a really long time. Tesla came in and took it from them. So people want Teslas in the in the sense that they're loyal to it. They really like the brand. And so there's one data point that says Tesla, people want Teslas. Tesla was one of the very few uh, car makers that grew year over year in the US. They grew 44%, 22 versus 21, GM 3%. And then the rest of the car market shrunk year over year. Here's another data point that says people 
front Teslas. Uh, I asked Bing, Bing Chat, uh, what the Cybertruck backlog was. Tesla has a backlog of over 1.2 million reservations for the electric pickup truck. It ranges somewhere between a million to 1.5 million, but there's a lot of people that want this pickup truck that we've been waiting for for three, feels like forever, but we've been waiting for for a long time. Another data point that says that people want Teslas. If we look at the uh, top 10 most sold vehicles, is that 10? Yeah, <laughs> I got a camera, one, two, three, four, five. Um, the top 10 most sold cars in the world, the Tesla Model Y, the number four uh, car with 760,000 units sold in the year, and one of the very few ones that grew year over year. The other vehicles shrunk year over year, the best-selling vehicles. The only other one that really grew was the Toyota uh, Hilux, Hilux, how do you, <laughs> I think that's how you said it. But really, the other ones were either flat or shrunk year over year. Another data point that says people want Teslas. And Tesla, based on recent sales, is trending to be the best-selling car in the world by unit volume in 2023. Another data point that says that people want Teslas. And all of this was done with zero advertising. So uh, if you think this has sort of set the baseline that says people want Teslas, then let me know in the comments. If you disagree, also let me know. But I believe this is data that says we've laid the groundwork that says that people want Teslas. So, okay, cool. So people want the car. So let's explore what price elasticity means in this sort of context. So price elasticity, this is a graph that kind of describes it, <laughs> but in something that's uh, highly elastic, meaning that something that is really influenced by price, the higher the price, the less demand, the lower the price, the more demand. And so this is the curve that describes how much elasticity that there is to the pricing. That's just sort of a very dumbed down way of thinking about it. But just think about how much the pricing dictates how much people can afford or want something. The one thing that uh, has been uh, really looked at and has been proven is that the car market is, is has a lot of elasticity, meaning that it's very driven by how much people, how much money people have that can afford something, especially if they want that thing. And so if we look at this graph right here from ARK Investment, uh, ARK, ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, shout out Kathy Wood if you're watching this and everybody there. We just had uh, Sam Chorus on a uh, on a panel a couple weeks ago or last week. Thank you, Sam, for doing that again. Met Tasha as well, lovely people. The more inexpensive a car is, so if we look at the left here, and this is a graph that I've shown before on this channel, the cheaper a car is, a lot more people buy the car because there is they become a lot more affordable. Very few people can afford a expensive car. So $60,000 or more, only 5% of the total US market is addressed by a car that costs that much. And the cheaper a car becomes, the more and more people are able and want to buy those vehicles. And so if we look at where the Model 3 is today, starting at 43,000, there's an IRA tax credit of $7,500 that lowers the price. But for the sake of this exercise, let's use this starting price because it basically means the same even if they have the EV tax credit per se. The $43,000 is the lowest price Tesla. And they have more expensive cars as well. They have the S, the X, the Y. But starting at 43,000, you can see that the total US car market really is addressed up to 20% with cars that are around $43,000 or more expensive. And that's the place where Tesla plays. They have cars all along that range based on options, what tire you want, what paint you want. They basically have this full spectrum covered up to say $120,000, $130,000. And so Tesla's current offering is addressing about 20% of the car market. However, if we take a Model 3 and we say, let's cut it in half, this implies a compact car type vehicle that starts at around $25,000. And if we find that same exact point on this graph, $25,000 gets you all the way up to 80% of the car market. Now, this is cumulative, meaning that it's all the different cars that are sort of added on top of each other. But another way of thinking about this is that this opens up 60% of the US car market that Tesla has not been able to play in up until this, this compact car comes to fruition. So the compact car, another way of saying that, <laughs> is that it's 3Xing the existing total Tesla market. And so if we think about it another way, and we assume that the US market is representative of the total global market, you're gonna have some differences, but let's just assume that it's loosely correlated. Right now, Tesla's gonna be able to ship roughly 2 million cars in 2023. And so opening up that additional uh, market share is gonna essentially loosely mean that the compact car is gonna be 6 million cars on its own. 
in addition to the 2 million cars that Tesla is selling. Real quick, before we get into the autonomous thing, if you want to join my community, you can click on join right below this video. Video You have access to my Discord channel uh, where you can just, all of us can nerd out together and talk about this stuff and other things. And then you'll also get exclusive content access every single Friday. Thank you so much. You don't have to. Basically, all my stuff is free. Uh, so I, but I really appreciate you if you do choose to uh, support the channel. The other thing that was mentioned on this clip uh, that, that I showed at the earlier, earlier this video is that this car... Uh, over time is going to be used almost entirely in autonomous mode as well. So you're not only going to have a, a platform or a car that's going to be $25,000 uh, per car, it's also going to become this autonomous car where most of the time is going to be spent in this mode. And the other thing that Elon said is that TAM or total addressable market is the wrong way of thinking about the concept of how big this uh, autonomous car can be. Uh, total addressable market is every human on earth was something that Elon said on this call as well. So this is not just, hey, I just want to sell this thing to people that own cars or can afford a car is I want to sell it to everybody. I want to sell it to everybody. So that sounds like literally everybody, <laughs> every human on earth, 8 billion people. All right. So you also have that within the context where an autonomous car, and we've heard this before, is five times more usable at the same cost. So the example that was given was a typical car is used 15 hours each each week. Um, under an autonomous car, you can do 60 hours per week. So it becomes five times more usable, essentially, five times more useful because you don't need a driver to move this car around. You can just hail it and it comes and it comes and picks you up. Here's another way of thinking about this within the context of their price elasticity to try and really drive home the point as to why uh, the entire planet being a total adjustable market makes sense. So this compact car, if it costs $25,000 and it's not autonomous, really only one person can use it unless they rent it out. But theoretically, it, most people is just going to be one person using it. So that means that one person is going to be paying $25,000 for this car. Under a autonomous mode, uh, in theory, even if Tesla owns it or an individual owns it, you're still going to be paying or it's going to cost, let's say, it's going to cost $25,000 for this car because it's the same exact har hardware. It's just the software that you turn on that it allows it to drive itself. In this case, the example that Elon's giving is that it's gonna become five more, five times more usable, which in another way of thinking about that is five people will be using it, let's say, instead of one person on average. So instead of one person paying $25,000, the another way of thinking about it is that one person's gonna pay $5,000. So it makes it theoretically five times cheaper. But what's interesting here is that what is the price elasticity of autonomous vehicles? <laughs> this is really the, the big question, right? It's going to be very cheap, obviously, if Tesla wants to pass on all the margin that would have made it by saying, yep, it's just going to be five times cheaper to operate this car. Theoretically, it's going to make it so that basically anybody <laughs> can afford a car. But the bigger question is, where is Tesla going to place its priority and how affordable they, they want to make this uh, car versus how much money they want to make on it. And so this is really the big question. When you think about it from a cost perspective, is Tesla going to charge the equivalent of $5,000 per car because it's five times more useful? Or are they going to charge more? Are they going to charge more? And that difference is how much Tesla is going to make from a profit perspective. This will dictate how much Tesla keeps in margin, right? Now, because Elon has stated that the total addressable market is every human on planet Earth, Tesla will likely lean towards affordability versus profit maximization. But it really becomes a question of just how much demand there is this for, for this thing, which dictates the price elasticity of, of autonomous vehicles. We have no idea what that is, but it's going to be fascinating to explore this once Tesla flips that switch. And so if we think about it within this context, right, within this context, you can see that this is what people can afford right now in the U.S. This is how much people can afford to pay for a car, which dictates the U.S. car market. And it's sort of capped roughly at around 20. Really, there's cars you can buy for $17,000, but most of the market is up here. Like up here and down, 20,000 down is where people can afford to buy a car because you just don't have cars that are cheaper <laughs> in the United States. But if the robo taxi were, were, were to come to reality, Theoretically, 
if Tesla decides to not pass on any of the margin, you're up here somewhere, but you're already at 100 percent, right? But you're up, you're here, you're here. So the question becomes: What percentage of people can't afford a car or unit of transportation that the robo taxi opportunity would open up because it makes it so much cheaper to get around? And really, really, this means that there are going to be new customers that never existed that are now going to either buy or be part of that Tesla ecosystem of getting from point A to point B. And the when Elon says the most profound thing, really, I'm trying to put it in a number, <laughs> what this means, trying to like conceptualize what this means. But this is my best attempt here, is that this graph, this graph describes people that can afford a car and getting down to 25,000 already says you have access to 80% of the market with all your offerings, $25,000 and above. But once you get below that and you have this robo taxi network that theoretically, depending how much you want to keep, could get you down to say an equivalent of $5,000 per car, what does that mean? You introduce a lot of people that can't afford cars right now that can now afford to get from point A to point B. You have people, let me do a monologue, here we go. <laughs> you have people that would take public transportation all the time, a bus, they would carpool, they would choose not to leave the house because it's too expensive, right? All of a sudden, this odd autonomous vehicle or this, or, the, or this thing that you offer now opens up an entire new total addressable market that has never existed before. And this is, I believe, where Tesla's going with RoboTaxi. And this is why every single human on planet Earth will benefit from this because transportation will no longer be a thing that we have to worry about to afford. We can just have it because it is accessible for everybody. Now, where Tesla places that price is going to be fascinating to see. But yeah, just trying to put this on paper for y'all. <laughs> it's, it's still difficult for me to wrap my head around it truly. And this is an attempt for me to try and bring folks to where sort of my head is at. And so if you found this helpful, let me know in the comments for sure. Um, if you also want to support the channel, I have some merch you can purchase just like the shirt I'm wearing right now. And I also have a coupon for Athletic Greens, which is a uh, supplement I use every single morning. Love it to death. Coupon for that below for a free travel packs and vitamin D. So let me know in the comments. Let me know if this helps in any way. Uh, conceptualizing, the, conceptualizing this any better, the market opportunity. Let's throw some ideas around. I'm still working through it. I don't know if my this is fully really solidified or if it makes any sense, <laughs> to be completely honest. But uh, do let me know what you think. I think all of us sitting down and thinking through this as much as possible is going to help us all truly understand what this means. What does the most profound thing mean? Let's try to figure it out. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. I really hope this was informative and helpful. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.